So this is my second video on partial fractions. This time we're looking at improper rational functions. So remember what a rational function is. It's a function over a function. Now an improper rational function is this. It's a function where the degree of the top function is greater than or equal to the degree of the bottom function. So a couple of examples of improper rational functions. This is an improper rational function because the degrees are the same, right? Greater than or equal to. Improper. This is definitely improper. x to the 5 over x to the 3. Don't worry about all the other stuff. It doesn't matter. The higher, this is degree 5, this is degree 3. So this is an improper function. All right, so now we know what an improper rational function is. What are we doing here with partial fractions? Let's look at an example. So here's my example, x to the 5 plus 2 over x squared minus 1. We're going to express it as a partial fraction. Okay, now it's at this point that you should stop and think about what this means. This is this function divided by this function. And what we can now do is something called polynomial division. We didn't need to do polynomial division when they were proper rational functions, but we're going to have to do it when it's an improper rational function. So I'm going to do that here. I'm going to do this polynomial division here. If you already know how to do that, just fast forward to this time right here, and I'll have the answer, and we can keep moving forward. If you want to stick around, let's do this one real quick. x to the 5 divided by x squared is x to the 3. Now, x to the 3 times x squared is x to the 5, and x to the 3 times negative 1 is negative x cubed. All right, we subtract one from the other. Now, we can't really subtract... 2 from x to the 3, right, because they're not the same degree. So I'm just going to push that plus 2 over to here. All right, that's a little better. All right, so let's do this. x to the 5 minus x to the 5 is 0. You would always expect that to happen. Now, there's no x cubed term here, so we're just going to say 0x cubed. 0x cubed minus minus x cubed is positive x cubed. So we get a positive x cubed here. And then there's like a 0 sitting here, so it's 2 minus 0 is positive 2. All right, let's continue on. x cubed divided by x squared is positive x. Now, x times x squared is x cubed. That's always going to happen. And x times negative 1 is negative x. Now, again, that x is not that 2, so I'm just going to shove that 2 over. Now, let's subtract 1 from the other. x cubed minus x cubed. That's always going to be 0, always going to happen. There's no x term here, 0x. So 0x minus minus x is positive x. And then we get 2 minus, there's nothing there, 0. We get uh, positive 2. And finally, we can't do x divided by x squared anymore, which means that this thing here is our remainder. Okay, so now that we've done all of that, we can express x to the 5 plus 2 over x squared minus 1 as equal to x cubed plus 3 and then plus a fraction plus x plus 2 divided by x squared minus 1. Okay, now that we've done that, we can leave x cubed as it is, we can leave as it is, and we can then do this one as a partial fraction. So I'm not going to do it all on one line here. I'm just going to kind of rule this off and just leave it there for a second and just deal with the partial fraction part. So x plus 2 over x squared minus 1. Now x squared minus 1, a difference of two squares, so we can express that as x plus 1 and x minus 1. And now we can say that what well, we know, that's going to be a fraction and another fraction. And one of those fractions has a denominator of x plus 1 and one of those fractions has a denominator of x minus 1. Okay, and now we can jump. We're going to do this pretty quickly because you've done partial fractions before. x plus 2 is going to be equal to a times x minus 1 plus b times x plus 1. Okay, and now we need to sub in. Let's sub in positive 1 because if we sub in positive 1, that's going to be 1 minus 1, which is 0, 0, a, and then that's going to give us a value for b. All right, so we're subbing in positive 1 for x. Now, when we do that, we get uh, 3 on the left-hand side. This becomes 0, and we're just left with 2b there, which means that b equals 3 over 2. 
Okay, so far so good. Uh, we can do the next one here by letting x equal negative 1, and that'll get rid of our b value. So what do we get here? We get negative 1 plus 2, that's going to be uh, 1, and this is negative 2a here. And that b, it's going to be 0 times b, which is 0. All right, so that means that a is equal to negative 1 half. Now, uh, we're pretty much finished the game here because we can now say that uh, this fraction here, or this, um, this rational function here, is going to be equal to negative a half as our a value here, and 3 over 2 as our b value here. And then we've also got this x cubed plus 3 to make up the whole of this. So I might just, uh, before I do the whole thing, I might just put that b value here and that a value here, because they're both fractions and that can get confusing. So I'm starting to run out of clean space here, but here we go. We have x plus 2 over x plus 1, x minus 1. That's this thing here. We know that it's going to be equal to an a value of negative a half over x plus 1 and a b value of 3 over 2 over x minus 1. Now, I'm just going to show you this real quick. That's the same as negative a half times 1 over x plus 1, which is clearly negative 1 over 2 times x plus 1. All right, so this is not that. We don't have to write it as that. We can write it a little bit neater. So you can see that negative 1 stays on the top and that 2 moves down to the bottom here. And we can pull the same trick with 3 over 2 divided by x minus 1. So finally, we are finished. We were asked to express this as a partial fraction and we can now do that. We can say that x to the 5 plus 2 over x squared minus 1 is equal to... We found that it was equal to x cubed plus 3 plus this fraction here, and through all of this working here, we figured out that that fraction is equal to these partial fractions. So we can finish it off with negative 1 over 2 bracket x plus 1, plus 3 over 2 bracket x minus 1. And that, that is our final answer. All right, that's partial fractions, improper rational functions, there is a real flow to it. If you see that it's an improper rational function, you've got to do some sort of polynomial division. These things become this. We get a fraction that comes from these two values here, this over this, this over this, and we get that. And then we go through our regular partial fractions working to split that up into its partial fraction. That's it.